Right, Simon, before we start, I'm just going to let you have the clock. I so want to hold your clock. <laughs> there it what is. Hello, Clocky. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> I think it feels fantastic. You know, virile and hefty. And may I say that it goes very well with your jacket? Oh, thank you. And that's, I assume that's why you brought it, yeah. Shall I have it back now? No, if you must. Okay. Um, are you ready to go? I'm ready to go. Please count us down. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. That was a very quick countdown. Okay, how would you describe yourself in a sentence, please? Impulsive, irresponsible, imaginative, dreamer, um, fun-loving, romantic in the 18th century sense, I think, really. Hobbies? Cooking. Uh, cooking, shopping, girl locked in a man's body. Love, make friends with butcher, make friends with fishmonger, come home. I've cooked for all of the kids, you know. It's the way I wind down, it's fantastic. It's the one thing I'm good at. You know, I was crap at sports. Um, I wouldn't know carburetor if it fell on me. But actually, I can do cooking. I'm a cooker correspondent for GQ, young Stadland. You know that? Yeah. <laughs> I have to admit, I didn't know that. Oh, I, yeah, it's main <laughs> job. Are you a socialiser? <laughs> oh, I don't know what that is, really. Do you go to lots um, of parties? Do... No, no, not loads. I do. I like parties. I love it. I love dancing. I'm a sort of. I'm basically John Travolta meets David Brent. That's my mar- my party style of dancing. I love dancing. It's a frightening sight to most people. <laughs> yeah. Is it very energetic? What do you very imagine? <laughs> yeah, I don't have to keep my arm down for that. And how? So yes, what sort it's of? Basically, if Mick Jagger was any good, it would sort of be like me. What sort of? In what way? Oh, the strut. No, I'm teasing. Mick, it's all right. Yeah. <laughs> So Mick, what sort Mick, of yes. music? Thank you for reminding me of that. <laughs> yes. What sort of music? Jimi Hendrix. Love Jimi Hendrix. Love Nirvana. Um, Janis Joplin. Love, but actually new stuff too as well. Neutral Milk Hotel. Love them. Um, indie rock coming up. Love CeeLo Green. Love the unbowderized CeeLo Green. Um, Clash. Reveal Clash. Arav Shalom, as we say in Hebrew. Could we please talk about your writing style? Yes. Did it come naturally to you or did you have to work at it? I just drank loads and loads and loads of coffee. Um, No, I mean, my dad was great Dickensian, so the richly stuffed sentences. um, I think my dad called it, you know, plenitude, big fancy word. And he was was a big but not fancy man. Something that's really overflowing with life. So madly, not that I'm any Dickens, I thought writing was like that. Very imaginative, very fruity, very earthy, very physically felt. So... I don't think I ever wrote in any other way. And lots of professors said, too many adjectives, young Simon. It's very un-English kind of writing, as I'm often reminded. What about TV? What about broadcasting, presenting? Did that come easily to you? No, I mean, I sh- I sh- believe it or not, I shouted and waved my arms around, and so you're going to say no change there then. <laughs> but now is the kind of understated, subdued Simon, really. In the early days, I was completely and totally out of control. There was one time where I was sort of yelling across the baths at Bath, and the cameraman said, actually, you're mic'd up, Simon, we can hear you perfectly well. And I thought, ooh, so he is. Um, so, um, so television very unsparing. You have to be really, think of it as an intimate. Do you see yourself then as a popularizer of history? There's no nobler label in my view. History isn't just for other academics. It is for the people. We're all wired, especially kids, are wired for history, just as they're wired for Lord of the Rings or Harry Potter or something. It's the richness and amazement of our ancestry. Okay, very, very silly question in a way, but why does like history this. matter? History matters because we find out what it's like to be in a human skin, simply. It delivers no more but no less than poetry or philosophy, which is quite something. Are you, have you always been in love with history? Yeah, I mean, I grew up in a grey, sort of bisto-coloured 1950s. So what was out there that was brilliantly coloured was the past. I wrote my first history thing as a play about Sir Francis Drake singeing the King of Spain's beard when I was seven. But I thought he actually singed the King of Spain's beard. And Ingrid Shaw, next door, I got to play the King of Spain. I nearly burnt her chin to cinders, actually. It was not a good thing. Can you... Poor Ingrid. I wonder if her chin is still like that. Can you remember lots and lots of kings and queens in British history? Yeah, all of them. I can't do all the Ethels, you know, and the eggnogs, the very early Saxon ones, but most of the rest, I think. History or history of art, if you had to give up one, which would it be? Oh, I wouldn't be. I, I cut myself down the middle, really, with, you know, a bread slicer and fall apart. I, really, for me, they're the same thing, actually, so almost the same thing. Do you have a favourite artist? It's got to be Rembrandt, how I've written about, partly not least because as people kept on remarking when I was writing the book, my face was gradually deteriorating into the late Rembrandt, like a kind of, you know, basically decomposing potato. So I'm very fond of him. 
of all Which the... may not be the best reason to revere Rembrandt, but it's a reason. <laughs> of all the <laughs> centuries in history, which means the most to you, which gets you the most? Gets me? Well, I have a thing about the 18th century that I wouldn't have liked the lack of aspirin. Um, on the other hand, it's really this one. It's got to be the time you're living. You have to first embrace the time of living before you can actually dial up the past. Is there a, a historical century. figure you're most interested in? You've got four seconds to answer this. Uh, Matthew Standland. <laughs> what a flattery you are. We didn't even get to talk about your comedy, although that was no. a fairly comic <laughs> remark. <laughs> Great to see you, Simon. Thanks.